Hello, I'm Sorospa, bringing you another episode of Gaming Archaeology. Uh, so we're coming back to Namgo Museum Volume 3. Um, so it, this is kind of a part 2 to my last video. Uh, so if you haven't seen that one, you should probably go and watch it. Um, in it, I will explain like what Namco Museum is, what it's all about, why I'm doing this, um, you know, to show off arcade games over just like directly emulating these arcade games themselves. Um, right now, what we're concerned about is going into Fozon. Um, so fortunately, this game is not complicated uh, like. Uh, like Tower of Draga is, it's going to be about something much simpler, atomic physics. Um, so we've got uh, some materials here. Uh, it's kind of interesting seeing kind of the, uh, the cultural artifacts around this, um, considering, you know, it's, it's such an un unknown game that doesn't it doesn't kind of just exist in a void, like, you know, there were actual cabinets, like, promotional materials for this stuff. Um, you know, this, this, these games actually, like, existed as, you know, as artifacts of, of their time, uh, which I think is kind of fascinating. Um, so, unlike Tower of Draga, uh, I don't think I'm going to have a lot of difficulty explaining what Fozon is all about, uh, despite the kind of esoteric subject matter. Yeah, alright. Okay, so there, there's... this game is kind of abstract. But, um, basically, the idea is we control this spiked blackberry, and we need to catch, uh, these blobs on it. Um, and meanwhile, a, uh, swarm of, uh, plastic balls will chase us while we try to build a pattern in the middle of the screen. Um, and, I mean, that's honestly kind of it. Um, like many arcade games, uh, it's pretty simple and it doesn't have the super obscure secret shit that uh, Tower of Draga did. Um, the plastic balls, uh, known as the Atomic, um, it, do it does have some tricks up its sleeve. Um, and this game actually is quite difficult. Like Tower of Draga, I never really got very far in it. Um, Partly because, you can already see it, building these patterns is actually quite a bit harder than you might initially think. And the problem is that um, the Atomic has various means of knocking blobs off of it. Uh, I think they're called uh, mollicks, which is just molecules, I guess. Um, I can't remember what the blackberry is called, but whatever. Um... And you, you can't, like, move your group, your structure off the screen. So you have less mo room to move, the bigger it gets. Also, we get a bonus stage where we can press buttons. Basically, this stage exists just for you to take out your aggression on the atomic, because uh, there's really nothing to it. You just blow it up a lot. Believe me, after you play this a while, it'll feel good to take out your aggression on this swarm of evil plastic balls. Oh, I just left. Screw this. This is above our pay grade. Um, this was also one I was really curious about. Uh, what I kind of want to know is, if you actually get really far, um, does it, like, start repeating patterns? Um, I guess, like, the, you know, the feeling of achievement of, like, something to mark your progress um, tends to be something I really care about in games, but in arcade games it was just kind of like going as far as you could. Um, so it doesn't really matter if like levels repeated themselves. So, I don't know. This might be another one where I just, um, save state my way to victory just to see what it's like, because I don't see myself really doing that far. Um, now these super blobs here basically give me the power um, to brush my shape up against the plastic balls and destroy them. Um, not my actual, like, blackberry. Oof. 
but um, the Moloks gain this destructive power as long as they're connected to one of those uh, super things. Um, and so now it's shooting like be like little little beams, little like rays that uh, knock my Moloks off. This is getting to be pretty bad. Um, and if things go badly, you can actually end up, as you can see, worse off. And so, um, I don't think I lose a life, do I? No. So if you survive, um, there's actually a meter at the bottom which tells me how many Moloks I get. Um, apparently you, the stage just starts over. Um, and you can see me kind of tossing up out Moloks that don't match. Um, you basically have... You have to toss them off in the order they, the reverse order they popped on, which can put you in kind of a sticky situation sometimes. I kind of wonder why this game didn't catch on so much. Um, maybe it's just a little too weird. Um, and a little too fiddly. I don't know, because I like it. Um, I mean, I suck at it, but that's okay. This is where things actually start to get pretty tricky, because you are not a small, uh, structure anymore. And, uh, jeez. And those plastic balls really are out for your blood at this point. It seems so simple at first. Just add, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six of these things, and, uh... You know, it's just that easy. And sometimes it is. Sometimes. Um, but then sometimes a critical one gets blown off, and sometimes just it doesn't usually go very well, is what I'm saying. Um, now, when it's not split up, the atomic actually does move in a very uh, regular pattern. It kind of has this um, little, like, clover pattern it goes in. Um, but that's not a lot of comfort when it can split up and basically do whatever the hell it wants. Oh no. Oh no, that's bad. I missed one like in the center of my uh, pattern. Yikes. Good lord. I really would like to get a little further in this. I should probably save the Super Molex. <laughs> well, so much for that. Good lord, get out of here. No. No, 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 no. God. Jesus criminy. Yeah, alright. That's uh, World 2, right? Good lord. I guess you can't say it's not engaging. But yeah, it's funny. This game didn't really catch on, because I, I think it's good. Um, maybe, maybe it just, was it, was it just not on like American arcade machines? Maybe this one was also popular in Japan. I, I wouldn't know. I didn't even look up the Wikipedia article on this one because I didn't need to look up any secrets about it. I'm kind of curious. It's I, I kind of wonder like what it would be like to play these you know, back in the arcade, um, back in the day. It seems like a really different experience from you know sitting in here playing them at home. Um. Admittedly, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I much prefer to own things, um, you know, in the arcade you have the, shit, you have the downside of not, uh, you know, no matter how many quarters you pump, you can't, uh, you don't get unlimited access to the game, um, and I guess that was normal once and is kind of starting to become normal again. But, um, I, my, my preference has always been for, um, 
you know, static things you can kind of have and own, um, you know, once you, you pay for it and you just have it. Um, and that's kind of, you know, not, not where uh, the life of video games started out. Um, and now this one just makes you throw away a bunch before you can even complete this pattern. Apparently we're uh, making like progressively larger hearts and I don't even know what shape I'm making apparently. Um, so you can see this is starting to get kind of complex. And I think that this may be as far as I get, which is kind of sad because it's the second level of this world. <laughs> Jeez. You know, you'd think that like difficult arcade games would be more my style, because I do like playing hard games, but I don't know. Um, somehow it just feels a little too frantic. Boop. Attack! Shit. Well, I'm done. Uh, how far are we? Only 11 minutes. Well, what do you say? Let's give it another shot, right? Maybe I could have just done this as like three-fourths of a full episode. Or no, what? One-third. That was completely off. I'm sorry. What was that? Three-fourths. This is why I shouldn't do fractions while I'm, uh, playing games, I suppose. You know, it's funny how it lures you in. Like, this is so easy. And you could just feel like, you know, maybe... Maybe this won't be all that tough. Just, you know, a handful of blobs on your raspberry. Uh, wait, blackberry. Um... Although maybe it's a hybrid, like, it's got the raspberry spikes. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's getting a little late. <laughs> Attack! You know, that's awfully aggressive for, uh, basically molecular construction. I actually, uh, it's funny. Um, I kind of compared this game to Space Chem, in a way. Um, it's nothing like it in terms of, um, gameplay, of course. But it's... It's a funny kind of thing, where... It, f it feels like, um, there's something... There's something kind of tying these two games together, um, where they, they kind of have this fanciful um, interpretation of, of kind of the, the small world of atoms and molecules, and this one is kind of more arcade where Space Camp is more, you know, puzzle programming, um, and the big thing about this one, as far as its aesthetic, is it feels very much like it's influenced, um, obviously by, more by the conception of science and science fiction uh, of its time than, you know, as opposed to Space Camp, which is kind of influenced more by uh, modern ideas, um, you know, about physics uh, and about, you know, science fiction. Um, and it's very interesting to see, you can kind of, you can kind of see, um, the, uh, just kind of the flavor of it, um, and I don't know if I could even put into words exactly what it is that feels kind of, um, you know, 80s science fiction, uh, almost kind of like Silver Age. Maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe this is just like Silver Age Space Chem <laughs> or something like that. Um, I don't know. Silver Age might be the wrong time period. Someone, uh, someone may have to correct me on that. Eighties, seventies, eighties. Uh, I don't know. I guess it seems. What? When was the Bronze Age? Maybe I do have it wrong. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. These ones that are like in between are like the hardest to crack. 
the hardest to catch. You really want to avoid that situation coming up at all if you can help it. Where you kind of have it to get it in the middle of a continuous line. That's like, uh, that's the worst. Oh, man. The, the little, the, the worst thing about it is how it destroys your pattern with those little, uh, those little shots. It's just, uh, you know, it's like creepers in Minecraft. There's just something, something primal that really gets us about things that break our stuff. You know what I mean? Um, is this gonna be okay? Is it? Mm, yes! It can be okay. And maybe I can even get enough lo uh, score to get some extra life in here. Is it 2,500? Or 25,000? I guess it's not 25,000. Press buttons. Haha, <laughs> 30,000. Gotta destroy them all. I have to get a perfect. Hell yeah. And there's no way to speed this up. Oh well. You know, I have to say that, um... I also, I like the, uh, the sounds. I don't know if you would call it a soundtrack exactly. Um, it's, it's very interesting. Um, ah, shit. It, it's funny how it, uh, it really feels so, so alive, um, by, it, it almost kind of, like, I don't, I don't know if I'm trying to, I'm trying to put into words, but it, it kind of feels like, um... It's, it's almost like a combination of sound effects and music. Um, shit again. It, where it's, it's like kind of like, like mini, mini like musical cues for things that happen. Um... It's, I, I, that's really interesting. Um, of course, may maybe I'm just, like, projecting and it actually just is a continuous track. But, um, uh, I think it does have, have a certain amount of reaction to what's going on on screen. I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe that's just, uh, you know, my imagination. What? No. Man, I would love to complete this heart, but, uh, good lord. Maybe I should just watch someone else do it on YouTube. Sorry guys, uh, if you, if you want to come to, uh, you know, see your, uh, sick Fozon completion video, um, you might have to look up someone else who's, uh, better at this game than me. Wait, wait, can I do this? No, don't break my things. Duh. No, it's definitely having some reaction to what's going on on screen. I'm sure of it. No. No, 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 shit. This is your fault, Pink Blob. Mmm. I finished this uh, video. I'm really getting into it. Yeah. It does kind of grab you. Maybe I can become, uh, you know, I can really practice and become the Fozon world champion. 
I mean, how many people really play this game, right? Mm, yes! That's what I should do. I should look up the foes on World High Score. <laughs> oh, come on. I knew it was coming, but I mean, god dang. Well, at least I got rid of that thing for a while. It's back. Seriously, like, a bigger heart? Good lord. That thing's huge. How are you supposed to finish it? Mm, and I made it the wrong length. See, now I'm like half the width of the screen. How am I supposed to have any hope of building anything and like collecting them at the right angle? And everything? Like, this is absurd. But I must persevere. I can, I can do it. I'm losing like so many marks. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Uh, come on. No, 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 no. Dang it. I was this close. Shit. Gotta get rid of this whole thing. And then stick this on. Man. I should practice at this, because this is, like, really getting my blood pumping. It's really getting that blood pumpkin. There we go. Now we gotta keep going. Keep... shit. Shit. Yeah, shit. At least it doesn't appear to be shooting, like, horrible, hope-destroying beams this time. But, like, it doesn't really need to, because I'm just, like, getting all this stuff stuck to me. Without, and having to just waste them without it. God dang. Give me a break. No, no. Shit. Come on. I would have felt really good if I had beaten World 3 to close off this match. Alright, well. Um, so I think that's enough foes on. We've gone like 23 minutes. Um, now, if that's all you have any interest in, uh, you can go now because that's, uh, you know, that's our foes on for the day. Um, but I do kind of want to poke around the museum just a little bit more. So if that interests you at all poking around a virtual museum, um, then, you know, by all means stick around. Uh, I understand this might, this might be, uh, you know, even, even harder to justify than watching someone playing video games, is watching someone walk around a museum. But, you know, um, maybe you're into it. In retrospect, it's clear, like, how much, um, you know, how big Tower of Draga was from the viewpoint of the people who made this game. Um, you know, there's you know, painting uh, for one of the characters from it. Um, and a lot of this uh, side area is kind of devoted to talking about it. Unfortunately, uh, while you can speed up, you can't turn any faster. I came here a lot because it talks about Tower of Draga a lot. Um, Apparently there's a magazine with like all kinds of covers. Maybe this is where they gave hints. What is a linkable game? Um, and I felt like if I understood all the stuff in here, then it would give me some insight into what to do, how to play the game. Um, oh, see, it, it was definitely giving hints. Um, 
And like there's a kind of this roped off area here that you can't access and I, it's obviously just decoration but you know little kid I'm thinking like if maybe there's something past there like maybe that's where you know if I if I look everywhere maybe I'll find out like what I'm missing right so there's a whole bunch of you know sketches and stuff um, we can actually like look at, I'm not gonna look at all these because it's kind of slow to load it up but we've got Gil and uh, and Key who is the, the girlfriend to be saved of course uh, Ishtar, who is the goddess who sits around and, I, I don't know, makes the plot go? No, no, that's not true. This guy makes the plot go. Without him, there'd be no plot at all, right? It looks cool. I really, really always wondered what it'd be like to fight him. If I could do it. Floor 60, man. All the slimes, all the knights. So you, you can really easily imagine, like, oh, like, so I'm, I'm getting some insight here. Like, this one shoots spells, and this one shoots fire. This one shoots kind of some kind of, like, double beam, but I've never seen it before. So, like, well, how does that work? And this one maybe, like, destroys walls. Um, like, you can see on, uh... But on these other wizards, like we've got these two that we saw, um, and we've got this guy. And you, you can see if you look close, he's got like a picture of like a, a brick exploding. So like obviously this symbol means you know that this graphic is like destroying walls. So that's you know that's maybe something. And then this double beam is back. So like this this was kind of what I was trying to do. Um, is just look through here and understand like you know what 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 am I missing is there something here you know and these characters which I, I never saw what the heck this thing is I think it's taken from D&D &D. ropers um, and then dragons and I always wondered what the dragons would be like are they are they hard to kill they, they must be hard to kill because they're dragons so this was the kind of stuff I always looked for and like and the items like maybe it would tell me what to do with the items Maybe if I could read Japanese, right? It would it would tell me something like there's notes here. Maybe I could like you know, Understand What it meant and I figured that the black potion was probably bad. That's the po uh, yeah, it says potion of death and I, I figured, so I figured that there were bad ones, I think. Um, so so this was what I was trying to do, was just kind of look through and there's a lot of other stuff in here. Um, you know, a lot of illustrations. I'm not gonna look at all these because I've already spent way too much time, much time looking at pictures and I'm sure no one's watching anymore because how interesting could this possibly be, right? And I, I, I like this one because I think it's kind of funny. Um, they've got this like little comic and they've got like actual like photographs of like slimes on wires. This is probably, you know, probably the reason I got inspired to draw comics is because of the fact that, you know, you've seen there are like little comics strewn throughout that are about this game. Um, and I think I probably did get like kind of inspired kind of funny to think like if, if this had taken more like maybe I could have been like a comic book artist instead of a programmer if I could if I could possibly uh, resist the call of programming um, I don't know I did try drawing for a while but I was never really much good at it that's why I have to uh, hire artists to draw things for me instead And the theater, I think that the theater actually shows you like stuff, sprites and stuff, I want to say. I don't know, I don't think I've actually, no, I haven't like, looked. Slideshow. I'm just going to probably look at Tower of Draga and maybe a little bit of Fozon if we have time. Because I'm, I'm kind of curious what we're seeing here. Yeah, okay. So... Very basic stuff, but you can see like 
It's like this game was teasing me, like, this is everything in the game. If you just, uh, you know, look through, got your lizard man, what does he do? What do all these guys do? What's with the ghosts? I never saw any ghosts. What the heck do ropers do? What about these dragons? Why is this one called Quacks? And you know, so this is what I had. It's, it's almost like this is an artifact itself. Like there's so many little hints. Like what is Ishtar? What is Draga? Got this little Draga sprite. He doesn't look that intimidating because he's only like 16 by 16 or something. Um, fun stuff. How many songs are in this game? Nine. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, really, I, I wanted to understand the Tower of Draga, and the sad thing is that there wasn't, not only was there not enough information to under, to understand this game in this CD, there wasn't even enough information to understand how little I was understanding, um, so I was always kind of in the dark, and it's, you know, it's funny thinking back to those times when we didn't have the same level of information about, like, literally anything. So this is a chemic. That's what it's called. That's what the blackberry is. And then molex, atomics, alpha rays. Fancy. You know, consciously I know it, but it's actually kind of funny to just see these sprites and realize that they're just a bunch of little slideshows run around on the screen like that's that's all they are just a bunch of slideshows in fact there are no more than six slideshows that make up this entire game's you know moving moving visuals and like six songs oh is that the like winning sound see that's the kind of thing right all these little things, they're little mysteries, and you're like, what is it? What does it mean? Where is it at? Is is that is that the sound I'll hear when I win? I guess that's what's fascinating about this to me is it's not it doesn't just dump you in with a game. Um, this this disc really feels like a mystery, a mystery that extends beyond the six games put onto it. Um, and maybe even a mystery that extends beyond the disc itself into, you know, things I never could have known back in the day about the true nature of Tower of Draga and about the, all of the, um, you know, the cultural influence it had and, you know, the, uh, the network, the, you know, the imagined network of gamers who must have talked and discussed and experimented and colluded to understand this game and I didn't have access to any of that and you know so I was kind of investigating this artifact without even knowing how little I have really understood about it um, and I, I hate to uh, this is kind of Fozon's episode and I hate to kind of draw the focus away from it but um, I, I really was, for a long time, very fascinated by the Tower of Draga, um, but these are both good games, and you know, all of these are you know, pretty awesome classics, and I don't need to uh, review these probably, because you probably are a lot more familiar with these than, uh, than the two that I reviewed. Um, so, man, this one hit the nostalgia button hard for me, you can probably tell. Um, this is just leaving, I guess. Well, I guess that's appropriate, because uh, we are leaving now. So, um, oh, I found the credits, I guess. That doesn't usually happen on an episode of Gaming Archaeology. Uh, so, um, I guess I'll see you next time. Uh, let me see, what do my notes say? I've, I've uh, got completely different notes open, so I don't know. We're going to play uh, a game called Blasto, which I barely remember, and you probably never even heard of, but... That's what this is all about. So, I hope to see you then. Bye-bye.